All right. Well, welcome back to Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox. And we are kicking off our second segment with the What's Hot segment featuring our girl from Chocolate City, Miss Nicole Williams. How you doing, lady? Hi, X. I'm doing well. How are you? I am great. I am great. Busy life, but it's a great thing. Mm, great mm. thing. Uh huh. Yes. Who are you telling? There's no um no grass growing under my feet. I know that. <laughs> oh, there never is. There <laughs> never <laughs> is. Never. <laughs> and if it is, it's foreign grass. It's in some other country somewhere. <laughs> exactly. 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 So you'd already know. <laughs> yes. You are living the greatest <laughs> life. I'm just like, man, if I can go back and be 30 something, yeah, I'm going to yeah, live her come life. Come back with me. <laughs> right. I'm going I'm to do that. But you know, I keep telling you, we're going to do um, a girl's getaway, and I really want you yes. to come. And so, in our, I have a private group um, with all uh -huh. the ladies that I travel with, and we just voted mm -hmm. on our next getaway. And oh. so, I am going to invite you off offline of course oh, because uh, yeah. off air rather because it mm -hmm. is a private group we are growing but you have yeah. to have traveled with us in order to invite somebody new so I can invite somebody yeah. new of yeah. course because I've invited everybody already yeah. but once you're <laughs> in then you because we have a real I love the vibe in the group and mm -hmm. everybody is really laid back we have not had any you know how they say women can't get along mm -hmm. we don't have mm -hmm. that testimony at all Everybody is, is so mellow and laid back and drama free. We have a lot of networking Absolutely. going on because it's all professional women as well. Everybody has Absolutely. something going on and stuff. And it just really um, supports my vision of sisterhood. I used to talk about yes. sisterhood all the time. And people used to mm -hmm. tell me it would never happen. And so mm -hmm. this group that I have, I think I'm going to name it something like that too. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this group that I have, it, it just totally debunks that that theory that women, especially Black women, can't get along because we are traveling and doing our thing and loving on each other and everything. So it's a great Absolutely. thing. Definitely want to bring you in. So what's yes. going on in celebrity gossip right now? Yes, yes. So this week, um, you know, this subject always gets me hot with my online community, especially the That Truth, my um, Facebook group. So this week, Megan Thee Stallion, um, who is arguably, I guess, the top really female um, rapper or the most popular rapper kind of out right now, um, she did an interview with Gail King. Okay. So I went ahead and watched it. I, you know, I watched the, I watched it on YouTube, and so she had, she gave her version of events of what transpired the night that she was shot in the foot, and so she is sticking with the story that this rapper, Tori Lane, is the one that shot her in her in her feet. And so I just don't understand why men just refuse to believe that maybe this man did shoot at her in her feet. Yeah, um, who do they think shot her? Yeah, I don't get it. I literally, I, so I, I went live on my page this week, my Instagram page this week to find out, like, I don't follow the rappers as much as I used to. So I'm like, wait, is he like the biggest new rapper out right now? Is he the new Drake or the new Jay-Z? Because the the way that men are so loyal to him, I can't. I can't. Uh-oh, you dropped out. Can't hear you. Corey, Megan, oh, there you, are. you dropped out from girlfriend, him. Kelsey, at that time, her and the young lady are no longer friends. And the security guard slash Tory security guard slash driver was in the car. So it was four of them. Okay. So men are mainly saying that either the best friend shot her or they think maybe they were tussling for the gun with the gun and it went off. All of which sounds absolutely ridiculous to me. Um, because um apparently and I do believe this part could be true. So apparently they were fight. They were arguing in the car. You know, they they left. Um, what's the girl's name? Kylie Jenner, one of those Kardashian girls. I think it was Kylie. They left her birthday party. They were all at Kylie's birthday party. So they're in the car. Some sort of fight ensues between them, allegedly because Tori was messing with both of the girls. So mm. you know, remember they're like best friends, and then now he's sleeping or messing with both of them. So that supposedly was the root of the argument. I don't know. I wasn't there, but that's word on the street. 
Okay. So apparently that's what got things heated in the car. And then that's the next thing we know, she's shot in the foot. So my whole theory is, I know women, we are so much more loyal to a man than another woman. Even if that other woman is our best friend, if I find out my best friend is sleeping with my man, I'm probably going to be mad at her even more because she's supposed to be my friend. Right. So I don't, so I don't believe that the friend shot Megan and she's covering for the friend and accusing him. To me, I just, I don't believe that. I don't believe that theory at all. Yeah, that sounds really crazy. Yeah, that's what men are saying. They're thinking that the girlfriend shot her. Not the boy, not Tory Lane. They're saying her friend shot her. So anyway, in the interview, Gail King asked Megan what happened. Now, she didn't go into the deep detail, but she basically said what I just said. She said they were leaving Kylie Jenner's birthday par- or p- pool party. So they're in the back seat. You know, they're all in the car with bathing suits on. She was in the front with the driver. Kelsey, the girlfriend, and Tory Lanez are in the back. She made it sound like Tory Lanez and Kelsey were arguing. So she said she told the driver, pull over. I want to get out. This is just too much. So he pulled over. She got out. They were like, no, 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 Megan, get back in the car. Of course, that's, you know, of course they're going to say that. So she did. She got back in the car. She said some more fighting popped off. She gets out again, and she claims that Tory Lane started shooting at her feet and said, dance, bitch. Oh. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and so she was, like, you know, I guess in a state of shock. She said next thing she knows, she sees, I guess, neighbors or whoever, wherever they were, someone heard the gunshot. So someone... Uh, you know, a, a pub person that heard the shot called the police. She said there was helicopter. Next thing she knows, she saw helicopters. They're surrounded by cop cars. You know, she's. They tell her to put her. They tell them to put their hands up. She's laying face down on the ground. So when they asked her what happened, see that was around the time she said George Floyd was killed. And so when they asked her what happened, initially she said, and this is why I guess the men said that she's lying. They don't believe her. Initially, she told the police that she stepped on glass. That's why, because they were like, you know, her feet were kind of like bloody. So Mm -hmm. they were like, what happened to you? She said, I stepped on glass. She gets to the hospital. They asked her at the hospital what happened. She said, I cut my foot on glass. She said the doctor, they had to do x-rays and stuff. And they're like, ma'am, you have bullet fragments in bullet in your foot. Like, clearly you did not step on glass. And so they even showed like the medical report that showed that she had, they had to extract um, bullet fragments out of her feet and stitch up her feet. They showed the pictures wow. of her feet. Um, because at first it was almost like the, pe- the men were saying she made that up. She wasn't shot, blah, blah, blah. But no, the medical co- reports confirmed she did have fragments of bullet in her feet. Um, and so Gail King asked her, but then, but why did you lie? Why didn't you say he shot you? And she was just like, at the time, she was scared. She didn't want, in her mind, they're going to kill, when the cops first came, you know, they're going to kill us all. There's this hot gun in the car, you know, I guess not registered or whatever. She probably knew that. So her first instinct, she said, was to protect him, even though he did hurt her. Um, she said he had offered her a million dollars in the car, like, please don't tell nobody, don't tell nobody. Um, so I don't know what changed her mind to go. I don't know what, when it switched and she decided to say, no, what really happened was he shot me. Um, so you that's probably didn't pay up. Exactly. Right, right, right. Even though I'm like a million dollars, what is that to her? But you're right. He probably didn't do something <laughs> he said he was going to do. Um, so then she was probably like, F you. Now I'm going to tell the truth. So that's essentially what's happening now. I think they're going to the, the trial. I want to say is in September. Um, and Tory Lanez has been issued, I think, a gag order by the judge because I think he was kind of talking about it in songs or alluding to different things in songs. And so he's been banned from discussing it into the trial. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and the best friend, oh, they had released in the Gail King interview, they released a text message from the her friend Kelsey that she sent to Megan's security that said, oh, my God, Tory shot Meg. Mm-hmm. And I I'm like... That. Yeah, so I'm just like, okay, well, why is this so far-fetched to believe that he probably, you know, found the passion? I don't think he was trying to kill her. I don't think he was necessarily even trying to hurt her per se. Um, but that's basically what happened. Right. And, you know, they're, they're young. They were partying. They were probably drunk or high or both. 
And we know when you get drunk and hot and emotional, things can pop off. So I, my whole issue from the beginning was men immediately said she was lying. They never even could conceive that maybe he's lying. Maybe she is telling the truth. I just, I didn't, I don't understand that controversy to this day. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily understand it either. But then I guess if if you really think about it, we've had a lot of women lying about what men. Right, have that's what Merv was saying. You know, Merv they're... used that example also, but I'm like, but normally it's about rape. Normally, um, and is Megan the star? She's a celebrity. Does she normally, is she one to lie about a, a thought from a man? I don't know, but. I, I wouldn't think she'd, even if he didn't pay up, I, it doesn't seem like, because I mean, she's got millions, so, you know. Oh, yeah. One million to her is nothing, really. I mean, we, I, we nobody's going to turn down a million dollars, I'm sure, but if you right. have multi-millions already and someone's like, I'm going to give you a million if you don't talk, and then they don't, I mean, that's not necessarily the reason to talk. So I think, um, I believe he did it, um, but right. they were saying that there was... Did they say there was no gun residue or something like that on his hands or something? Well, remember his lawyer put out his lawyer. So that was revealed that his lawyer put out that there was no gun residue. And then her lawyer came back and said, well, actually there was. So it's, a, it's, it's really become a he say, she say type of case. Um, and, but then the, and the evidence has not really fully been released yet. I guess they probably won't release it into the trial. So it's, we just don't know. It's literally his word against hers at this point. So let me ask you this, you know, and we just having mm -hmm. a little girl talk here. We just going to get into mm -hmm. this stuff here. So Meg and the best friend are both messing mm -hmm. with Tori, right? Supposedly. Now, when Gail King asked her, did you and Tori have a romantic relationship? She said no. When she said, uh, did I you guys that have part. sex? Yes, no, I do think she was wrong because when she said, do you, did y'all have sex? She kind of paused and yep. then said no. It wasn't a quick no. Now, I personally thought that was a very intrusive question because whether you're having sex or not, to me, what does that have to do with him shooting her? It, you so know, this kind is, of it's this is where I'm going with it. This is where I'm mm -hmm. going with it. So um, if Meg and the best friend, supposed mm -hmm. best friend, are messing mm -hmm. with the same dude. Mm -hmm. What is it that causes the dude to shoot her? Because he's sitting back like, yeah, I got both of y'all. What? Right. So what would cause the dude to shoot her? What was his motivation to shoot her? All I could think is they were all hyped up. You know, they were all yelling and screaming and being dramatic. She's hopping out the car. They're like, Megan, get back in the car. She's not listening. She's probably like, F you. So maybe he just shot out the car to like to to calm her down and to warn and to basically get her like to stop walling out. That's all I could think. I don't think he was I don't think he would shoot at her to hurt her or to harm her. I think it was just a chaotic night. Okay, and so that, let's so, and maybe so he was trying to get her back in the car, but she was hyper and screaming and crying and so then he just thought, you know, to, to stop her. So I kind of like suspense movies. So we're going to, yeah. let's go another step further. So to me, the person with the motive mm -hmm. would be the best friend because she's pissed at Megan and she's pissed at Tori. So she right. shoots at Megan and blames it on Tori. That sounds, that sounds like a winner. But why would, I don't see why Megan would say she saw him pointing the gun at her and saying, dance it. Because it really because she know, she know that she was doing her buddy wrong. And so now it's like, okay, you shot me. You didn't kill me or really hurt me. You shot uh -huh. me for messing with the dude or whatever. I don't know who was messing with him first. But right, anyway, right, right, that piece uh, you don't know. <laughs> right. But so now you shot me, but you know, you still my girl. So I'm gonna cover for you and we gon we gonna both get this mug right here because he ain't giving me my million dollars anyway. <laughs> right. And now I can believe that if her and the girl were still friends, but her and the girl are not even friends. Her and the girl not friends now. No, they're not friends. After this incident, her and the girl would not stop being friends. Like I can almost believe that because then I can say you're right. Those two women are gonna tag team against him because he was double dipping 
but they're not even friends. Her and the girl, Kelsey, stopped talking after that incident. Yeah, see, but so I that's think, why I don't I think, know. I think that's a little plot twist too. I, I think this yeah. is this is going to be a a, a reality it's show just, one day. It is. We need, I hope they te- they either need to televise this case or <laughs> let us read the transcript because we need to get to the middle of this. Because because now that we getting into it, now that we getting into it, my little mind is working over here. And I'm thinking, I think the best, and so because the best friend, she was the one that said Tori did it. Right. She texted the um, Megan security at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. and said, hey, may, uh, Tori stop. Oh my God, Tori stop Megan, something like that. Uh huh. Uh huh. So she got them both. And so now right. she's got friends with, with, with yeah, I, I think the best friend did. You think the best friend did it and texted Megan security to cover her track? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, wow. And so you think Megan lied, is lying on um, Tori to get back at him for double dipping in both of them? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah, that's what, that's one of, that's been one of the theories. That has definitely been um, one of the theories that has been put out there. And, that and, and I just now, I'm just now thinking on it. I really haven't thought about I heard it, but I hadn't really thought right, about right. it that deeply. But right. as since, you know, we're, we're talking about it right now. That's, that right. makes, uh, that makes the most sense, you know. That the best friend, so the best friend shot at Megan, so maybe because either Megan took her man or, I don't, yeah, I just still don't know why. Um, I'm sure the girl knew before that night that, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know what they knew. Right. Right. But all we Megan can do is, is the superstar. So uh, yeah, I don't know. You know the um the show Monk is one of my my favorite because uh, <laughs> he has a little OCD too, and so oh he, wow he just thinks everything through. Yeah, I like those kind of shows though. But based yeah. on what you just told me, I I think the best friend did it too. I definitely think the best. Well, friend if did I was Tory Lanez, I wouldn't be taking the fall for nobody. So. If I was him, the first, I would have said the very next day, I didn't shoot her, Kelsey shot her, and that's it. Um, but look, if if um, if um Tori had shot her, because I, I don't believe that, oh, we thought we was going to die. You're Meg the Stallion. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, you're celebrity people here. They gonna, right. It's a little bit different when there's no right. real value on your life, you know. Right, uh, right. Because that, that's what's happening with these cops out in the street. They, they got anger and fear going on and they don't right. value the lives of these you know people out here in the street but you have right. known celebrities right here you know who these people are probably i'm sure you do and maybe uh, I, I could see a white cop maybe not knowing who they were though potentially but yeah hmm. maybe I mean, once sure. they said the name but to look at her they a white cop may not have known who they were or who he was well, that that could be true too, but how they rolling, you know, what they what they what what they driving, what they wearing, the jewelry. Right. You know, these are right. probably not just your average people. You know, where right. were they on top of that? Where were they? Where right. They? She said they were in bathing suit, like she's in a bikini, you know. Um, they had just come from a they were somewhere near um Calabasas or Hidden Hills, one of those, you know, uh places with money. Okay. So yeah, all of that stuff is gonna be taken into consideration. So um, I stepped on glass. Mm. So she's covering yeah, well, yeah. for the best friend. She was friend. covering for someone. She covered she definitely covering. Friend. She covered for the best friend because she already knows she did it wrong. So she so then I wonder friend. why he didn't just say the best friend was the one who did it. Like, why is he covering for the best friend? Well, who did he co- say did it? The best man, he didn't say, he didn't say nobody did it. He just just said, I didn't do it. He didn't say he didn't well, do it in a song. In a song. But he never came out when when Megan started accusing him. He never did anything to clear his name. And the best friend is not a celebrity. She don't have nothing. Why does he have to protect her? Even if he screwed her over, why are you letting your reputation go down the drain? Okay, so let me tell you this, because you know I have an attorney that does the show as well. She has a segment, mm-hmm. and her and maybe what's his name, Tori? Maybe uh-huh, he's Tori. been in trouble before. I don't know who he is or what. What right. But, one of the first things that April says, if you are pulled over by the cops, do not say anything, period. Right. Don't say you you did it or you didn't do it. Don't say anything, period. Right. Because if you don't say anything, an attorney has a better chance of getting you off or getting a, a better uh, 
a lesser charge or whatever if you don't say anything. Right. because once you open your mouth then you start to incriminating yourself um right so this if is you true. listen to those miranda rights it says anything because we always stop at anything you say can it does not just say that it says anything you say can and will that's so true it does you. so it does say will yes it can and will be used against you so he was smart <laughs> yeah he didn't say in the song he did a song um he did a song that just said something like he didn't do it or whatever um they saw they released a text that supposedly from him that said oh my god i'm so sorry um they showed him say that but again he could be sorry the french got her i don't know um right. well, sorry about did, the situation yeah. in general yeah 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 he did uh release a text uh saying that so either now if the friend now you know who's the the only one who does know what happened and i hope this is the person whose testimony well then again he could be lying too i was gonna say the driver the security guard no one's talking about him he was there he saw who shot her because he was in the car i wonder even how he even let it get to that point of guns coming out so whose security guard was he, he was Tory's security guard and driver so he could potentially say you know oh well my client didn't do that you know because he wants to keep his job but he was really the almost the other he was the other witness he was in the car mm -hmm. well, uh, I but i still don't know if your security how you will but yeah so it's interesting we'll see how it plays out in september that's all i know it what we'll happens in september, september. The trial? the trial that's when they go to trial yep oh yeah everybody's gonna be paying attention to that so everybody's would, gonna be watching that if i was the best friend i would disappear too i wouldn't be her friend i'd disappear off the face of the earth exactly period. i think that's where the friend has pretty much done yep yep she's and gone quiet yeah she's not releasing any statements or anything yep yep all right well i guess we have explored that in in connection yeah. with that a really sad really true story and I'm not sure if it happened here or where exactly it happened. My youngest daughter was talking about it yesterday. But, you know, uh -huh. that all ties into domestic violence. And domestic violence is yeah. very real. And people are losing their lives every day. There was a story Absolutely. where uh, a lady was killed. She wasn't even the one in the relationship. So her friend <laughs> was being abused. She, hey, went, oh she went to help her friend. Not to fight ah. Not to fight for her friend or fight this dude, but to pick uh -huh. her friend up but, oh. uh, and take remove her from the situation because the dude. Yeah. Uh, and so the dude was coming at them with a hammer. What? The best the friend, uh, the one that was in the relationship, wound up in the hospital. The guy, once the friend, I guess, was in the hospital. The guy broke into the friend's house, the, <laughs> the girl that had come to pick her up, and killed her. Uh -huh. What? Yes. Went into the friend's house and killed her. Yes. And she was just helping to pick her girlfriend up. Like any of us would do. Yes, yes. Oh, he was a maniac. Well, obviously he was a maniac, but why he does that? That's so sad. It's, it's crazy. This domestic violence stuff is just out of control. It's crazy. And apparently there is like an epidemic here in Milwaukee right now. It's like, wow. Guys are killing their girlfriends left and right. And I'm like, okay. I make What's sure I don't get no guy, no no boyfriend while I'm here. I just exactly because they sound real dangerous. I don't I don't want to joke about it, but yeah, I'll be keeping to myself for real. So anyway, yeah, on so to sad. some lighter stuff. On to some lighter stuff. Yeah. So what yes. are we Netflixing and chilling with? Yes. Yeah, so Ozark has returned. That's one of my favorite series on Netflix. So I just watched. They took a little month hiatus. So I just watched the first episode of I think season four episode eight so good um so all for all of you ozark fans it has returned with a bang started off very lively um let's see there's also a new documentary which i started last night but i fell asleep on the death of maryland um, monroe they're releasing there's some tapes of unreleased conversations that an interviewer had from back then um with i think some of her lovers or people that knew her um, so that's a documentary that I'm interested in finishing. I'm, I'm planning to watch that once I finish. Um, I'm still on Married at First Sight, and I got some stuff. To say oh, yeah. Once you, once you finish what you're talking about. 
Yes, yes. So I know that's up there. Um, those are really the only two. I mean, that's the only thing I, the only two that I've watched, I guess, kind of this week. But it looks like there's a lot of good content on there. I just haven't had time to explore it all. So, okay, I am on, I've been trying to get through Married at First Sight because I love those kind of shows, right? Mm -hmm. I like that one too. I just haven't watched it lately. So this is season 10. And Mm -hmm. to me, when you watch those shows, you know, I watch it for different, different things. I look Mm. for different things. And sometimes what becomes so blaringly obvious is the inability for people to really be in relationships because (laughs) they are so unconcerned with the other person's happiness Mm, and so in particular Mm. it's the taylor and um brandon couple Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the black couples and um i know that uh brandon definitely has his issues as well however um taylor triggers his issues and she does Mm. not see it at all so Brandon has said he's having a problem with being filmed, period. I don't know why he got on the show, mm-hmm. but I guess finding a relationship was the most important thing to him versus mm-hmm. uh, he probably didn't really understand how intrusive <laughs> it was going to be into his life. Mm-hmm. However, yeah. so let me let me just say this to you. So imagine that you got married at first sight and you're uh-huh. laying in bed sleeping, right? And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you wake up and your mate is filming you live on Instagram or whatever because you're snoring. Oh, no. No. Uh, that's that Will Smith and Jada. Did you see that clip? No, I don't like stuff like that. And so that's what she did. And he's no. already a private person, right? And so right. that that just set him on a whole downward spiral right. from there because then it becomes more apparent how often she's stuck in her phone. And, you know, oh, I, no. people talk about you know, going out with people who are always in their phone, like you have to take a picture Mm-mm. of every single plate of food you eat, Mm-mm. you know, and you're scrolling through to see the likes and all of that kind of stuff. So this is who that Taylor lady is. is. No, know? that's so immature. She just sounds immature. And then she's like, you know, I tried, I tried, but you know, she doesn't. And then she made a whole video standing outside their apartment talking about why can't I find a man that meets my qualifications I guess I'm going to be single forever you are married yes you are married number one one, you're married so now you're single you're going to be single what and you know she she said all of this stuff and then she says oh it wasn't directed toward him so I don't know why he's upset about it miss you're married you just said you're going to be single forever how can that not be directed toward him I don't understand how people I don't understand the thought process of people sometimes she sounds so incredibly selfish that's the thought process it's only like thinking about self they can't put themselves in the other person's shoes for one minute to see how they could possibly feel and then she talks and it's, it's about, even if they don't understand it they could say you know what I acknowledge you I don't understand why you feel that way but because you feel that way I will do better at um some of the things that I've been doing right that's all you have to do and then when Brandon gets mad about it then she's like you know he's like the worst thing in the world because he has this bad attitude and he won't talk to her well at some point after you said the same thing a Over. couple times mm-hmm. you will because I'm only going to say it to you twice I know how that right. is it, once I tell right. you twice the same thing then I'm assuming that you just don't really care. So I'm not going to continue wasting my breath talking to you about something that you don't care about. I'm going to shut down and probably prepare to leave. That's what I'm going to do. Absolutely. And that's what most people do. I mean, like you said, how many times do I have to tell you the same thing? Now it becomes you're willfully ignoring my feelings and you're purposefully hurting me. And, And that's what he did. So he eventually left. And, you know, here's another thing. I think because, you know, sometimes we're cute. You know, she's a cute mm-hmm. girl, you know, mm-hmm. well-spoken mm-hmm. and everything. And sometimes mm-hmm. because we're cute, we got a few accomplishments, we're well-spoken, mm-hmm. we can dress nice, you know, you get a mm-hmm. lot, and she's an Instagram person, so she get oh, a lot of likes or followers oh, or whatever, see. you know. Yeah. So, you know, your your ego and stuff is all, oh. up, so you're the greatest, and no matter what you do, you know, you're still the greatest because Instagram loves you. And right. that is not a, a reality. That's that's not that's a reality. Not a real, that's not real life. That's Instagram. In real life, or people around you that actually deal with you 
are leaving you. They're moving <laughs> away from you. That is your reality. Because your personality is not genuine, you're mean, and you're selfish. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I've been, I, I can't say binging uh, because mm -hmm. the way my schedule is now, there's no way for me to binge anything. But right. I've been going back to what I missed or what I fell asleep on and just trying to keep up that way. So it's taken me a while to actually watch it. But it's just so, that stands out so much. I just kind of want to have a little girl talk with you real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you know, when I sit still long great. enough, I want to watch it too. Yes, definitely watch it. And when you get to it, and, and then maybe next week I'll talk about the other Black couple. Because, you know, it's ironic. It, the two Black couples seem to be having the toughest time. There's, um, well, no, I won't say that because there's one white couple and the dude is just really on the ego trip and they're having a horrible <laughs> time at it. Just a horrible time. But we'll talk about him. Uh, a different yes, but anyway, I love that show. I really do like it. Yeah, because we're we're going way over our time. So now, yeah. let, tell me about the <laughs> upcoming events in the Chocolate City. So anybody out there that's venturing to Chocolate City this weekend, which is the DMV, better known as yes. DC, what's going on? Um, let's see. I'm actually heading to a brunch today in um, Alexandria, at, and I've never been there before. So I hope it's good. At, I think it's called Tony and Joe's. It's in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, there's also the Point DC also has a really good um, Sunday brunch. Lydia on H Street, Black-owned restaurant, they have a really good Sunday brunch. I keep hearing great things about Black Swan, which is a Black-owned restaurant in Baltimore. Um, it's supposed to be really good, and they have um, music and great fine dining. Um, so I definitely want to explore that. I feel like Baltimore is like unexplored territory. We, we don't consider Baltimore part of the DMV, but it is in Maryland, and it's only like 40 minutes up the road, if that. So I plan to explore some more Baltimore spots this summer. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the Black Swan is there. Bar One Baltimore, um, I want to check that out. That's owned by Peter Thomas, who used to be on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. He has several Bar One franchises, so he just opened one up in Baltimore. Um, uh, those are the, the top uh, new restaurants. Oh, more and more. more was it more and more? I can't pronounce it. It's spelled M-O-I-M-O-I. -O -O -I. They are having an event exclusive dining experience tomorrow night that I'm going to in D.C. Okay. Um, but they have, it's a restaurant. So they're op they open every day. But Mondays is supposed to be a really nice night. And they're doing something exclusive tomorrow that I was invited to. Um, so, yeah, that's what we have going in the DMV. Everything now is more like restaurants that kind of our loungy vibe more so people don't go to clubs really anymore it's more of like a restaurant that may switch over to like a dj and you know if you want to hear music it's all in one yeah yeah and and you know especially as when you get in a certain age group clubs are not right. going anywhere exactly anywhere. So if no we one were wants in to our stand 20s, in lines probably, and all of that we'll be talking about clubs if we were exactly in our 20s. Yeah, exactly we're looking for lounges and something more laid back and all of that kind of you stuff. You can wait where well, we can sit down, right, and rest our feet. Right, yes, yes, because you probably no longer <laughs> dance with heels, things, put but... all your curls out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I still wear my heels, but I also need the alternative to sit down, too. <laughs> oh, and I still wear my heels, too. I had them on yes, last night. Yes, I saw you with your stilettos last night, honey, yes. Stilettos <laughs> never go out of style. My colleague, Miss Ingrid, my lady is fly, okay? Miss Ingrid got to be 60 and up, and my girl is in her heels every single single day oh so yeah I we said, have well, a, shoot. we yeah, have, have no excuse <laughs> one of the girls in the travel group she's um an older yes. woman as well and she still wears yeah. her heels and Absolutely. you know i think i'm the heel diva but she told me i yes, was a fuck because i will take my heels with me and change in the car before we walk in she said no no she said you got to be a real diva she said you put them heels on when you leave the house and you don't take them off until you come back to the house i said i'm not gonna be no diva <laughs> those heels is gonna be in my hand on the way to the car <laughs> and from yes exactly but i love it i love to see it i love women who it doesn't matter what age you are we got to get over this age 
stuff. Right. You don't understand why people feel like at a certain age, you got to let yourself go or you're no longer yeah. attractive or you can't look nice. I don't understand that mentality. No, I don't understand it, especially if you've taken care of yourself. You know, yeah. I think that that's part of that whole uh, mentality because people get so consumed with Western medicine. Yeah. And, and as their bodies do start to break down because they've been taking all of that crap, you know, for the majority of their lives, you know, then your body does start to break down as your, you know, pH levels change and just all kind of different stuff happens. So a lot of people do go through that. So they right. aren't at, you know, in that shape to be able to hop on top yeah, of heels five or six or... heels and stuff because everything is aching. But fortunately, well, that's, that's not my story. Thanks to my eyes. Exactly. <laughs> and my thing is, even if you don't wear heels, you don't necessarily have to wear heels. But I just love the old school women where they always look classy and elegant. You know, it doesn't right. matter how old they were. They, even though they weren't necessarily wearing heels, maybe. Mm -hmm. But they still, you know, put their little lipstick on or, you know, had their little nails done. Like, there's just still other maintenance things you can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there are some really cute little outfits, especially in the summertime with the yes. sundress. You have on your yes. little flip flops with your toes done and your little oh, ankle bracelet on. You absolutely. Look cute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cute. My godmother, shout out to my godmother, Lorna. She just turned 70 and she is fly, honey. Okay. I posted her little birthday picture and the men was all over my nail press. <laughs> <laughs> And I met another woman. I was out on a date Friday and I met this woman who was seven, oh, 69, going on 70. And Flavia, this woman looks so good. She literally looks a, not a day over 45. Wow. When okay. I say black is not cracking, our black women are, we holding on. So yeah. I don't know what these people are talking about old and you can't do this. Yeah, right. Right. We're doing it. We're yeah. doing it, girl. We're doing it. <laughs> All right, lady. I'm so, so yes, I'm gonna get ready for my brush. Okay. <laughs> or lunch. You have a great day, and um, I'm gonna um, connect with you about the girls' yeah. getaway coming up. Yes. So, Please send me that information. I definitely will. All right. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. Okay. You too. I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Later. Okay. Bye bye.